okay so let's we are okay so this is the thing we are doing right now so let's look at the manifest so what is the what's the manifest right so the manifest is okay so let's look what 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 happened here it says that it has a file it has an external you know so it has a file it has a file the RUT the RUT the re, uh, rarely used type module which is a different file right and it has and that's the extern that's what the extern donates that you know it's in a, it's, it's, a, it's from a different file so you can see that it says that hey so actually let's let's do this let's look at those two files initially before talking about it so these were the two files the frequently used type was just uh, was just a very simple file right that it's it's sealed class and says you know what i'm a frequently used type a rarely used type is once again a different class and it has an assembly version info what it says is that you know what this is the company and you know the file version title etc etc right so coming back to ILDASM we look at this right so it's it says all these things have got compiled here the you know we, we had a bunch of attributes specified inside the assembly version inside the assembly version info like the company and the version and all that that's what is contained here right the assembly company attribute so all these things are so this is just the hash code right and if you see the, it also has comments like okay these were the actual values the string the ASCII this representation in this case right and um, it says that okay you know what I have GIF types this is the assembly I have a, a different file that is RUT the, the, the other other module this is what the type is defined in that particular module right and that's pretty much it and it has some you know some more things now if you go back and look at okay now this is the type that is defined inside the file the um, frequently used type right which got compiled with it if you see here it says okay you know what this is what is compiled you know this is what is present here this is the type the type metadata so we spoke about four things that it, it would contain right it would contain the assembly manifest, the type metadata and the MSIL code. So if you see here, this is the assembly manifest, we saw what that is, this is the type metadata, right? And the type metadata is, and if you see here, this also has, okay, you know, that's what it is, right? And the constructor, it, it contains the actual MSIL code. Okay, it, it's doing something, right? So now that's, that's pretty much it. Okay, that's pretty much it. Is there anything, anything more interesting here? No, that's 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 it. Okay, now let's let's try to do it the other way, right? Let's try to first compile those two modules. Oh, let's let's do something else. Let's do something else. Let's try to load. Let's try to load the other module also, if I can. Multi file assembly. Okay, any type, right? So this is the file, right? So this is the net module. So the res so you remember we compiled the RUT into different modules. So that's why if you see the manifest, it's a very simple manifest because you know what? It does not contain any other like external files. It says that you know what, I am this particular guy, right? And the type is the rarely used type. That's it. Now let's do something differently. What we can also do is as we as we spoke about is that we can do it by the second way whereby we combine we actually have two different modules and then just gather them into the assembly right so we are going to do it exactly so you know csc is c sharp's way of compilation and all that i'm i'm leaving that for you guys to finish to figure it out i'm pretty sure you can do that so now let's try to load that assembly again jeff type of dll if you see here now the manifest the, there is no type there is no type metadata because it does not contain anything but if you look at the ma manifest, what it says is, you know what, it has two external files, file one and file two, right? And the two extern types that it, and you know, and it says, okay, this is a type that you can use if you have this DLL, and this is the file that it actually contains that type. That's pretty much it, okay? That's pretty much it. That's exactly how you do things. Uh, once we understand, I think, I, do you have any questions here? Okay. So once we have, you know, once we have this information, 
let's uh, talk about let's uh, talk about a little bit about the version number so the version number if you see it is something like this right 3.5 point something dot one so what this is, is that it's the third version okay this is the major version this is the minor version this is probably the build that this, is the revision. This, this is this is no this is not the revision this is the revision so this is the build, like let's say if you have a build daily, I think these guys probably have, like, I don't know what is their system, right? So if you have a build daily, you can increment this. And let's say for the same day, if you actually make a small patch or something like that, then that's the revision information, okay? Uh, so now, once we are done here, actually let's switch gears and talk about uh, strongly named assemblies. Okay, let's discuss as to what these things are. Um, so what how do you elimin eliminate uh, DLL health? How do you eliminate DLL health? So what will happen here is, so now tell me, what do you understand? So I will not talk about this in detail right now. What I would, what the question I would ask is that think about it, that first of all your packaging is simpler, right? You know that you explicit, in, with the type, you also have that what is the assembly and what is the version of the assembly that uses that type, right? So when that particular type is getting, you know, used, it will automatically search for that appropriate assembly. Now there have been some other talks about that how .NET exactly does not eliminate DLL help, but I'm not sure much about it. Okay, so we probably have to do some homework. Maybe we can have another session on DLL help and .NET explicitly. So let's talk about uh, strong name assemblies. 